Hello everyone. Uh, so uh, in today's video, we'll be uh, discussing about the uh, Synapse architecture. So in Synapse, uh, we know like we can create a uh, SQL pool. Uh, so also we can create a Spark pool. Uh, so in today's video, we'll see, uh, we'll discuss about the architecture part. Okay. So, uh, uh, so let's focus on the Synapse archi uh, architecture. So let's focus on the SQL pool architecture first, and then we'll uh, uh, move on to the uh, Spark pool architecture. So the SQL pool architectures are node-based architecture, as you can see. So that will be having, uh, so in the, in the architecture, it will be having one uh, control node, and there will be several compute nodes. Uh, so the uh, SQL pool, you can create either from your Azure portal or you can go directly to the Synapse uh, Studio and you can create a SQL pool as well. In case of SQL pool, uh, so the compute and storage layers, uh, both are separated. Okay, so the compute node, uh, so the compute nodes and the storage nodes are both are separated. <coughs> okay, so uh, you can scale up the compute node uh, independently. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, if you want to scale up and scale down your compute node, you can do that. Okay. Also, uh, if you see the compute uh, computing mechanism of your SQL pool, okay. So uh, in in one of one type of SQL pool, you can manage your computing power. Okay, you can manage your computing power. Whereas in another uh, another type of SQL pool, uh, you you don't have control over the computing power. Okay, you cannot manage the computing power of that SQL pool. So based on that, SQL pool has been uh, divided into two types, okay, into two categories. One is your dedicated SQL pool. Another one is your serverless SQL pool. We'll be discussing uh, uh, the architecture of both of these SQL pool. So in case of dedicated SQL pool, uh, it is using the MPP engine, okay, in the architecture. Whereas in case of serverless SQL pool, it is using the DQP engine. So MPP is for massive parallel processing and uh, DQP is for uh, distributed query processing. Uh, so also for the storage purposes, uh, so both the SQL pool, you can use uh, blob storage or uh, I, uh, data like Gen2 as a storage, okay? <clears throat> if you want to uh, create the SQL pool, uh, so you can create, as I told, you can go to Synapse Studio directly, you can create or from the Azure portal, you can create. So uh, let's let's go to the uh, Synapse Studio. Okay. So uh, let me go to my Synapse to uh, Synapse Studio and I'll create. So right now I have already created a dedicated SQL pool. If you go to Manage here inside this SQL pool, you can see like I have already created a dedicated SQL pool and the built-in serverless pool is already there. If you want to create a new SQL pool, go to uh, click on this new. Okay. And uh, you can see there are uh, four tabs here. So on the basic tab, you need to enter your SQL uh, pool uh, name, okay? And then uh, you can you can uh, uh, you have to select a performance level, okay? So based on this performance level, it will create your uh, compute nodes and the control node, okay? So I have created a uh, 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 hundred data warehousing unit comp uh, perform. Uh, uh, SQL pool. So uh, in 100 data warehousing unit, uh, it will create one compute node and uh, one uh, control node. Uh, so based on your data warehousing unit, so this is uh, known as data warehousing unit, DWU. So that's the unit, based on that unit, uh, it will charge you, okay? So for 100 data warehousing unit, you can see it's going to charge me on, uh, 108 INR per hour. <coughs> And uh, so uh, for this uh, data warehousing unit, it will create a specific number of uh, compute node and the uh, uh, control node. So that also you can see uh, on your SQL pool once it is created, okay? <clears throat> so now if I'll click on this review and create, it will create a dedicated SQL pool for me, but I don't want to create this SQL pool. I have already created, okay? So, uh, if you, uh, <clears throat> if, uh, so uh, let's go to this SQL pool. Okay, so which I have already created. Let's go to my developer tab. Let's go to my SQL pool. So I can, I'm using this dedicated SQL pool. Okay, if you want to see how many uh, control nodes and compute node it has created, so you can run this uh, uh, query. I'm running this query on uh, system view. Okay, so uh, once I run this query, so there are two queries as you can see. So let me go to, uh, query zero first. 
in the query zero as you can see so each compute node and the control node will be having one id so that is known as your node id so a uh, compute node is uh, uh, having this node id is 55 and if i'll go to uh, query one so here i am doing the count and based on the uh, type okay so when there, uh, so uh, in my school i i am having only one compute node and one control node okay so let's see the architecture of uh, this compute node and uh, control node. Okay. So if you'll see on this slide, uh, so uh, so on the left hand side, uh, uh, I have the architecture for the dedicated SQL pool. So if you'll see <coughs> on this architecture, uh, so this is the your compute engine part. Okay, okay, computing part, and this is your storage part. So whenever uh, a, a user will uh, uh, ingest a data to the dedicated SQL pool, so uh, it will ask or it will uh, uh, it will uh, ask the user to create a distribution. Okay. So there are uh, different types of distribution which you can create. There are three types of distribution, and uh, we'll discuss that uh, in a separate video. So by default, if uh, it will create the hash distribution. Okay. So based on this distribution, it will it will uh, uh, separate your data across multiple distribution okay it will create the distribution and it will uh, uh, store your data based on the distribution which user has selected and then in the computing part so you you are having one control node for pool will be having one control node and there will be several compute nodes which will be created based on your uh, dwu dwu is your data warehousing unit and then uh, this compute control node and the compute node will be interacting through this MPP engine. So whenever user will submit a query, okay. So uh, whenever user will submit a TSQL query, so it will come to your compute control node, and your control node will uh, distribute that query across all of this compute node, okay. And uh, that query will be uh, uh, executed parallelly across all this compute node. So for example, if you are having uh, so maximum sixty distribution, you can uh, you will be having on the storage. So if you are having 60 distribution, okay, and if you are having, let's say, four compute node, so this 60 distribution will be managed by four uh, compute nodes. So for uh, one distribution, uh, will be managing around 50 uh, uh, compute, uh, sorry, 50 distribution, one compute node will be managing around 50 distribution. Similarly, if you are having one compute node, in my case, uh, I have created only 100 DWU unit uh, SQL pool. So where I am having only one compute node and that single compute node in, is managing all the 60 distribution. Okay. So that also you can, you can uh, check that. Okay. So if you'll, uh, if you'll go to uh, my uh, studio, let's go to the studio. So here I have a query which you can run. Okay. In, in order to check how many uh, compute, uh, sorry, uh, how many distribution uh, uh, has been created. How many distribution have been created and uh, uh, like how it, how many compute nodes and uh, how it is distributed across multiple compute nodes so that you can check from this query so let's run this query see it uh, in the query if you go to the first query query zero you can see the uh, distribution id okay distribution id and uh, the uh, so this is your compute node uh, id Okay, and this is the distribution ID. If we want to see how it is has been distributed across the compute node, so there is one compute node, and you can see the distribution. So there are there are sixty distribution. All of these sixty distributions are uh, being managed by only one compute node, and that is the compute uh, the that compute node is having ID of fifty five. Okay, so this is this was about the dedicated uh, SQL pool. Now let's go to the uh, let's go to the serverless SQL pool. So in case of serverless SQL pool, uh, you will see one uh, difference in this uh, uh, processing engine. So if, if uh, so you will not see the MPP engine here in the serverless SQL pool. In serverless SQL pool, we are using the DQP engine, which is known as the uh, distributed query processing engine. So here, what will happen? Also, in case of serverless SQL pool, uh, uh, so there will be storage okay and these are let's say computing uh, mm -hmm. uh environment or computing uh, uh so this is for your computing nodes okay so in case of serverless tool what, what will happen whenever uh, your user will submit your query 
okay so this distributed query processing engine uh it will distribute your query across all of these compute node okay so the, your query will be divided uh into multiple sub queries and each of that sub query will be divided will be uh, uh, uh sent to each of this compute node okay each of this compute node okay and it will be executed in form of task you can say so the compute node will fetch the data from your storage okay and uh, so it will uh, work as for your query and the final result will be uh, sent to the control node okay so the difference is here the query that query will be divided across same query will be distributed across multiple compute node and it will be uh, executed parallelly and also there is one more service which is known as your uh, data movement service okay i forgot to uh, discuss about that so whenever this query will be executed parallelly in case of your dedicated sql pool so uh, your uh, data will be moving from one node to other nodes right because the query uh, is uh, being executed in parallel so data movement will be happening so in order to make that data movement happen we have a dms service which is known as data movement service okay so it will be present in each of this compute node and the compute node you can understand uh, in this way like each of the compute node will be having its own ways and uh, the memory as well okay in this case uh, here the computing node the number of compute node as you can see here uh, based on the dwu you can decide the number of compute node but here you cannot decide the number of compute node okay so based on your query requirement your serverless sql pool you uh, will create this compute number of compute node and whenever you will create uh, you will submit one query so that query will be divided into multiple chunks okay smaller chunks and that uh, that those sub queries will be sent to your compute node and uh, so the compute node will fetch the data and uh, so finally the result will be uh, collected and it will be sent to your uh, control node okay so that that's that is how the uh, serverless sql pool works again uh, if you want to create a serverless SQL, serverless sql pool will be already created so whenever you will be creating this uh, your uh, so whenever you will create the uh, compute instance let me go to uh, let me open this first of all let me uh remove all my drawing okay fine let me go to the studio so uh the serverless scale pool as you know it will be created whenever you uh, create a uh, your synapse workspace okay so i already have a serverless scale pool which you already saw and uh if you'll go there let's go to the serverless sql pool so here in the serverless sql pool uh, so uh, here if you want to uh, control the uh, if you want to control uh, the cost of the serverless sql pool so basically you can create you can uh, put some limit on the uh, uh, how how much data you are going to process so serverless sql pool if you will see it will charge you based on your uh, data process okay so how much data is uh, you are processing using the serverless sql pool so based on that it will charge you okay and you want to put a call limit on that so if you if you can go to this cost control so uh, this cost cost control you can set either from the ui or uh, you can run some queries so uh, i'll i'll show you the what are the queries you can run to uh, set this cost control limit so here as you can see how much data i have processed using the serverless SQL pool till now or this week I have processed around 30 TB of uh, uh, data. Now, if I want to put a daily limit or a weekly limit or monthly limit, I can put here in terms of uh, TBs I can put. Okay. And uh, if you will see here, uh, if you want to do it from your, uh, if you want to do it uh, using the, uh, using by running some query so you can also do that so if you'll go to the develop section so here uh, in this here you can see i have the query so this query you can get from the official documentation so this is the official uh, document link for, for uh, azure synapse so uh, once you run this query so first query i'm running to get how much uh, data i have processed uh, till now okay so that i will get 
So uh, I have run the query. You can see here, same thing I'm getting, same information. So uh, uh, today, how much data I have processed and weekly, how much data I have processed, so that I'm getting. And also, if you, you want to see uh, what, what is the limit you have imposed uh, right now on this serverless SQL pool, so you can get that from here by running this query. So from system configuration, you, you are running the query. And if you'll see right now, I have uh, set my daily limit as one TB and weekly as one TB and the monthly as two TB. If you want to modify that, uh, so this is the stored procedure which you have to run. Uh, so if you run the stored procedure, it will modify and uh, so uh, it will modify your daily limit and monthly limit. You can modify it by running this uh, stored procedure. Okay. So that's all I had uh, about this serverless SQL pool. Uh, so let's go to uh, the uh, Spark pool. Okay. In in Spark pool, uh, so you will see it will it uh, so Spark uh, is uh, basically we are using for the uh, big data and uh, for machine learning uh, application. So in case of uh, you can you can also create a Spark pool. Okay. In the uh, Synapse Studio, you can create a Spark pool. If you uh, so same way you can create from the Azure portal or else you can create from this uh, Synapse Studio. So if you go to your manage, it go to your uh, Spark inside your Spark pool. You can create a Spark pool, Spark pool by clicking uh, by clicking on here. So here you need to uh, give your Spark pool name, okay? And then uh, you can create whether if you want to use GPU so that you can go for which hardware accelerated, or you want to uh, you don't want to use GPU, so then you can just select memory optimized. And how many number of nodes? So it will charge you based on number of nodes which you are creating. Okay, so how many number of nodes and auto scaling if you are enabling? So based on that, it, it's going to charge you per hour. Uh, so if you go to additional setting, so here you have automatic uh, auto automatic uh, pausing. So this is for uh, if uh, if your uh, school is not you are not using for uh, a certain time period, then your pool will be stopped. Okay. So based on that, if you if you have enabled uh, this feature, and if you you can modify this time as well. If you want your uh, pool to be stopped uh, after two minutes of ideal time interval, so you can put that. You can change that. And also, if you'll see here. Uh, the uh, con uh, a Spark, which Spark version you want to use on this Spark pool so that you can change and you can manage from here. And uh, also like any Spark configuration uh, settings are also there. Any packages if you want to uh, install uh, on uh, during the session so that you can enable and disable from here. Okay, and this intelligent case is for the memory management. For effective memory management, uh, we are using that intelligent uh, case. So if you will see the Spark at architecture, so this is how uh, if, uh, you can create a Spark pool. You can click on Review Create and you can create a uh, Spark pool. Okay. So if you'll go inside your uh, uh, development environment, if you want to create any notebook, you can run and you can create your Spark pool. Okay. So here you can uh, create any markdown, or if you want to write any code. Okay. If you want to write any uh, Python code or anything, you can uh, write that and you can run it. Okay, you can select your pool. Okay, go to pool. You can uh, select a code and You can select your uh, Spark pool and you can run it. Okay, so let's see the architecture. If you'll see the architecture of uh, Spark, uh, so uh, here it's using the master slave architecture. Okay, it's using master slave architecture. So there is there is a driver node and then there is worker node and you are having the cluster manager. So uh, driver uh, node in the driver node, uh, whenever you create a Spark session, uh, your Spark context will be created on the driver node. Okay. So the Spark context will be created on the driver node, which is the entry point to your Spark application, you can say. And uh, whenever you will uh, submit your job, the driver node will distribute your job. Uh, it will uh, uh, segregate your jobs uh, across all these worker nodes. Okay. 
and then uh, on this worker node on this executed node so finally your execution will happen and uh, all the data will be collected in the driver node okay so whenever we'll see the demo uh, we will we'll discuss about the uh, spark mechanism and spark optimization in our uh, uh, coming videos okay so that's all i had for in for today's video uh, uh, thank you